these beautiful youngsters came all the way from Oakland to join us here today. So thank you once again. All right, and now we're going to bring up a, another longtime ally, someone who's been fighting this fight for many years from Amazon Watch, Leila Salazar Lopez. Leila. Bienvenidos. Muchas gracias, Andres. Long time. It's been a long time since we stood together in solidarity for justice. And I first just want to say I'm so grateful for this day. As Izzy mentioned, it's so, let's give thanks to this beautiful day that we're we can see the clean sky, that we can see the sun, that the winds calm down for us to be here, that we, we are all here together. It's been a hard week, a very hard week for the world, for our hearts, everything we've witnessed. The world is watching. The world is watching what's happening. And these children, Give us hope. Thank you to the children. Thank you for giving us that hope. I think we're going to be okay if we continue to raise children like this. Yeah! Set up this infrastructure to kill and dump. Currently dumped at least 16 billion gallons of toxic waste into the Ecuadorian Amazon to save an estimated $3 a barrel. And for that crime, they have paid not a cent. So every year we go in, and in 2014, they ran away from San Ramon to Midland, Texas. And we said, we're not gonna follow you there. Enough of this. We're gonna have a global anti-Chevron day a week before your shareholder meeting. And we're gonna pull communities together from around the globe where you've been destroying homes, communities, and climate and have a unified day of protest. That was eight years ago. Every May 21st since, we have done the same thing. This is the eighth year. There's no oil company that has a day like that for them, but Chevron does, because they have distinguished themselves not only as gross polluters, but corporate criminals. And we are all survivors of their contamination. We are survivors of their political attacks, the communities in Richmond especially, and I want to tell you one last story about the depths to the cancer that is Chevron. Because they have infected not just our communities and our environment and our politics, but our courts. So today is, I believe, six, day 660 that human rights lawyer Steven Donziger has been trapped with an ankle bracelet in his apartment because he refused to turn over his information to give to Chevron. They have been targeting Steven Donziger and those who stand with him since 2011 because that's when they lost a $9.5 billion judgment. And instead of paying that, they went to the courts in New York. They found a judge named Lewis Kaplan, former tobacco industry lawyer, and he dismissed the entire judiciary of Ecuador. He refused to go there. He doesn't even read Spanish. He refused the word contamination to appear in his courtroom. And he found that, that Stephen Donziger and others committed a fraud, denying the evidence. And who did he use as the witness for this? A Chevron paid witness who admitted he got $2 million in cash and benefits to lie on Chevron's behalf. And he admitted later that he lied to get money. But no court in the United States will look at that. And so as a result, Stephen Donziger kept fighting back, and now they've gone after him personally. So I sat in court last week in New York while a Chevron law firm acting on behalf of the U.S. government prosecuted Stephen Donziger in front of a Chevron Federalist Society judge who prevented any defense from being mounted by Steven Donziger and his legal team. But the problem for them is that their attacks are backfiring. There has never been more attention to what mm -hmm. Chevron did in Ecuador in, than in the last week than there was in 10 years. 
because they shut the door with their RICO case, but guess what? It's opened back up. We've exposed their environmental racism. We've exposed their, exposed their lies, which is why AOC, Jamal Bowman, Rashida Tlaib, Jamie Raskin, Cori Bush, and Jim McGovern wrote a letter to the Department of Justice and demanded that they get involved, and they identified Chevron's actions as, quote, illegitimate tactics to escape responsibility for what it did in Ecuador. That has not happened before. And I can tell you, I'm talking to members on the Senate side about getting involved, and we are going to have them on the run. So thanks to their overreach and our solidarity and our resistance, Chevron's lies are being exposed, and we will hold them to account for what they did in the Ecuadorian Amazon. Thank you very much.